This video is actually going to be a sort of a uh, tutorial on how to use the touch panel interfaces of Cisco Room video endpoints. I have here a navigator. I have over here a Touch 10, which is uh, the older model. Uh, they both have a very similar user interface. In fact, the only thing that really differs is the uh, the volume buttons and the mute key uh, on the navigator. They now are soft, you know, soft keys on the touch panel itself. So. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get a camera set up on these much closer so you can get a look at them as I step through a couple of options. If you have questions, comments, uh, you know, suggestions or things that I miss as I go through this, leave them in the video comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys and uh, there'll definitely be more iterations of this, you know, training video, if you will. Uh, with that being said, let's dive into it. So what you'll notice is that on the screen right now, I have a demo meeting that's already in progress. And uh, there's a join button there. There's actually a button there to extend the, the meeting by 15 minutes as well. Uh, this is what you'll be greeted with when you come into a room that has been booked from a calendar perspective. If you come in and the meeting's already started, you'll see it in progress. You'll see the organizer, name of the meeting, that type of thing. You can simply click join and jump into the meeting. I'm actually gonna close this to take us for a tour of the, the rest of the interface, if you will. You will notice a couple things. There's a call button, a share screen button, a join WebEx button, the room calendar button. This will actually take us back to where it was that we started and a book room button, uh, which will also give you a calendar view. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. So if there's no meeting book, this is actually where you typically will start. Uh, and go from there. So let's start at the top. There are a couple things to be aware of. There are uh, the name of the endpoint at the very top here. You can actually toggle this, enable do not disturb if you don't want it to, to ring and receive a call. Typically are not gonna use that, I'll be honest. Uh, there are settings. If you have to make settings changes, there's very little as an end user that you may need to get into in here other than perhaps enabling the WebEx Assistant, which is the voice controls. Uh, and there is also uh, face recognition, name labels, those types of things, and uh, music mode. Typically, your administrator is going to have all of these types of things set, and they actually have the option to lock you out of that as well, which in some environments might be uh, desirable. Moving across the top, there is a small button here that is a camera with two little sliders in it. If you open that up, you will see that there is uh, camera controls. Now, with that open on the screen right now, I am seeing myself. So on the screen, you'll see a picture in picture window here. I can actually maximize that to get a full view, a full self view, if you will. Uh, you can toggle self view on and off with that uh, option as well. Uh, you'll also notice speaker track is enabled. Now this actually produces the meeting for you, right? It zooms in on the active speaker. So it gives you a really great experience from that perspective. Uh, with that turned off, you can actually pan, tilt, and zoom, and you can select the camera if you have multiple cameras. Uh, and then of course, pan, tilt, zoom uh, that way. If you want to, uh, if you pan, tilt, zoom, and zoom in on someone that you want to uh, save that setting, you can actually add new and call it, uh, you know, give it a name. Maybe it's the host of the meeting, the person sitting at the end of the table. And then when you come back into this and you click host, it will actually jump to that camera setting uh, right away so that you have to uh, fiddle with the pan tilt zoom settings as well. When you're done with all that, you can actually turn speaker track back on and go from there. Speaker track is on by default under pretty much all circumstances unless something was changed to, uh, to do otherwise. You'll notice a little microphone with sliders as well. This is simply the noise removal feature. If this is turned on, uh, which again, it's on by default on late model endpoints, you can simply turn on noise removal. Uh, and you'll notice two options here. Default does not have noise removal uh, and noise removal takes out that background noise. So if a, a fire engine or a police car or something goes down the street, uh, it will take that background noise out. Now there is, I mentioned these settings before, there is something called music mode as well. So I'm jumping into those settings and I'm going down to music mode and I'm actually turning that on. Uh, and this is in the settings when we're done, we hit back and we close this out. Now, when we come in here, we'll see music mode as well. So this is if you're playing a video or if someone is singing or playing a musical instrument, this will allow that to be picked up and uh, broadcast into the call with high fidelity. 
noise removal takes that type of background noise out and default just does kind of its best effort, uh, you know, focuses more on the typical human voice. You'll notice it closes when you're done or after it's been idle for a few seconds to get you back to this default landing screen. Last thing I'll mention, the time is in the upper corner uh, in, case you, uh, in case you need to see that. I also mentioned the soft keys for volume are in the lower, the lower corner here. Uh, toggle that as needed. When you're in a call, you'll actually have a mute button as well, and I'll show you that in just a second. Now, if you're looking to make a call, you can come to the call button. You have a directory. I have a, a bunch, of, uh, bunch of users here. You can certainly look for them that way. You can also come here and type in the user. Uh, you type in the SIP URI, type in the meeting, the URI, that type of thing. If you're joining a Zoom meeting, you can dial the Zoom uh, you know, uh, number and uh, suffix there for SIP dialing. Um, and go from there. When you're done typing in what you need to type in, hit the call button and the call will be dialed straight away. Another way to join meetings is the join WebEx button. This actually allows you to type in the meeting number. So uh, the nine, 10 or 11 digit meeting number and it actually will uh, append the at domain.webex.com to the end. And, uh, and go from there. So it's a simpler way to join a WebEx if you, know, you open up your laptop and all you have is the meeting number, you can simply join that way as well. Uh, share screen. This allows you to uh, actually acquire a code to go to devices.webex.com and pair with this endpoint with a laptop or mobile device and share your screen. So uh, this is a clientless wireless sharing experience. Now, if you have the uh, one of the WebEx clients installed, you can actually share your screen with that as well. That actually uses proximity, so you don't have to use this code. This is a clientless experience, so just a web browser will allow you to do that. You probably won't have this on yours. I have a camera showing up here as a share device, so uh, typically that's something you wanna report to your administrator because that's not necessarily desired behavior. Um, if you have a laptop plugged into a USB cable, you'll have something similar to this and it'll give you the option to preview uh, the screen. I think I said USB cable, I meant HDMI cable. Jumping back now, we started with the room calendar that was on the screen. Let's actually open that up again. This meeting is in progress. Let's go ahead and hit join so that you see what that experience is like. All right, so we're joining the meeting now. I'm already in the meeting and I have a couple of, uh, couple of other folks in there. Some of the people are on video, some are not. Uh, so. You can see them kind of popping up here. Uh, I think we have a low bandwidth situation on their side potentially, but uh, on a dual screen system, you will see users appear on both sides and um, you know just get a different, uh, different experience from that perspective. Now let's jump back to the, the touch panel for a second. You will see a couple different things here that change. They, we now have a, a little uh, set of boxes so we can change and toggle the the layout, so I can do prominent, which actually puts uh, the key speaker inside of a, a window, and then uh, you know, then the other folks fill in around it. There's a grid, which kind of makes everyone equal, and there's also focused, which will give you the uh, the focus, which is the main the active speaker in uh, in the call. Something else to point out is this button here, the the person with the little three lines with it. This actually will show you uh, all the people that are in the meeting. So there I am, there the video endpoint is, and there's a couple other folks. You'll actually see who is uh, muted as well. So my user is muted. When you're done, just simply tap outside of that and, uh, and go from there. Now across the bottom, a couple key things. I mentioned the mute button is now a soft key. You can mute the endpoint. One thing that's worth noting is the mute there matches the mute on the, uh, the uh, microphone. You can actually pause the video. So if you wanna stop sending video to the far end, you actually have that option. You can share your screen. That share button actually comes across here. If for some reason you need to type in a number into the call, like a DTMF tone or something, you have a keypad. And the reactions feature is here now as well. So you can do uh, you know, all of these fun reactions inside the meeting from a video endpoint now. So, you know, round of applause for that. And last but not least, when you are done with the meeting, you can actually hit the red X 
to end the call. And we brought back to this screen. One thing I'll point out to, uh, to wrap up is if your meeting goes long and uh, you, know, you need to extend it, you actually have the option to hit the extend option. So we added another 15 minutes to the meeting there. And that actually will go back and be reflected in the calendar. So if someone else comes back uh, or comes into the calendar and wants to book this room, that will be reflected. Uh, if you have questions, comments, other tips, tricks, pointers, whatever, leave them in the video uh, discussion section below. I wanna know what you thought of that. If there's more questions than maybe answers in that, uh, let me know what you think. And I will see if I can come out with a revised version of this as things go forward. The feature set is always changing. There's always new enhancements. So of course this will be outdated relatively quickly. Uh, so of course we wanna stay up to date with that. The, uh, the UI changes a little bit here and there. So let me know in the comment section and uh, we will keep this up to date. Hit that subscribe button, come back and uh, I'm gonna thank you for watching. Hopefully it was helpful. We'll see you soon.